Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we're gonna be looking at water damage restoration estimates. Specifically, what are the differences between a simple cash pay estimate? What does that look like? What does that need to have in it? We'll go through one. And what does it look like when you're gonna write a seven or $8,000 water damage estimate that's gonna be sent and billed through insurance? What does that look like? What is the difference between the two? We'll look at those two. And then thirdly, by the end of the video, we're also gonna look at one written through ExactMate. Guys, the reason why I'm gonna show you all three of these, because they all look different. They have different elements. I promise you this, playing insurance is a game. Today's video is going to illustrate some of those things for you. I've done over a thousand water damage claims as an owner, and I've seen a lot and I've learned a lot. You will learn a lot in this video. If you own a restoration company, you don't wanna miss it. Let's go. Okay guys, so again, I'll just say this. The way I do things now is different than the way when I started out. If you are just getting started to restoration, you're new to the business, right? What you're going to do to write estimates and get paid, here's the only question you need to ask yourself. Is this gonna go through insurance or is it gonna be billed directly to my client? That's the question you need to ask, okay? And if it's under $5,000, maybe your client can pay it direct. If it's a $15,000 water job and it's really big, most clients are not gonna be sitting on that kind of cash and it's gonna need to go through insurance, okay? I hope that your first job's not 15 grand because you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> okay? On your first few jobs, I pray for you that you will get a nice, simple, clean cash pay, okay? Because the goal is not to get paid on job number one. The goal is to not burn their house down, okay? So for that reason, we're gonna start talking and looking at the simple cash pay estimate. I've pulled up a simple cash pay estimate here. Whenever you're gonna be selling something, be aware of thresholds, okay? And a lot of you guys are gonna do it as cheap as possible, and that's fine. The better you are at sales, the more you can charge for your services. The worse you are at sales, the more you're gonna be competing with the cheaper price. That being said, there's always thresholds, and it's my belief that $2,000 is a good threshold. I got news for you guys. You can charge whatever you want. If you're gonna do a cash pay job where you're dropping off equipment and you're coming back for any reason, it needs to be $2,000. And there's a few different reasons why. Number one, every time your truck rolls, you need to make at least four to 500 bucks. And if you're there to sell it and or drop off gear, you're at about 800 bucks right there for two trips. And then you're gonna have another $1,200 worth of work in the middle to get it to two grand. So if I'm doing a cash pay job, a small cash pay, $2,000 is a nice threshold. The $1,000 threshold increments are real. And so it's either needs to be under a grand or under two grand right under and you need to be bumping that's what i would say to you right you're not doing any good to charge them twenty one hundred dollars you might as well go to 28 or 29 because people pay for things in gradients right of thousands like those are the increments that they go through okay so for us a small cash pay that's the first thing i gonna tell you is be aware of your sum total threshold okay so it's either gonna be a thousand or two thousand every time you drive out somewhere think about it 500 bucks every time your truck rolls so if you're going out there to sign it and you got to come back to pick up any equipment at all you're at a thousand dollars for you to do any work in the middle that's why this one's at two grand and that's why i would tell you to put your cash pays at beyond that you don't need a whole lot of detail it doesn't really matter if you're doing a cash pay there's only one thing they care about and it's that dollar amount right there there's only one thing they care about and it is that dollar amount right there. The insurance company cares about the dollar amount at the bottom. In a minute, we'll finish up with this Xactimate deal and I'll show you why they care at the number at the bottom, but they control the end by controlling the means. They control the end number by controlling the means and we'll, we'll show you that with the Xactimate estimate. But anytime that you're doing a simple cash pay, just know this, be aware of where you're ending up and keep it at the upper end of whatever thousand dollar mark you're doing, okay? $1,900, $2,900, whatever, et cetera. If it's over $2,900, right, or over four grand, you're starting to approach where it would have made more sense to file a claim anyway, so you probably won't see very many there anyhow, okay? Because even if you're just doing mitigation, there's gonna be repairs that come after that. And so I'm just saying, your cash pay is gonna be around this number, okay? And if that's the case, we put initial response, $285, Work performed at the source of loss, a dollar amount, and then I always charge something to come back, all right? So to come out, do some work, pick it up. That's it. Now, why do we only show three? Because the only thing they care about is that right there. You could have put it in one, but if you can get to it in three, they feel better, I don't know. But this is a good example of how to do a cash pay. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Let's go jump on into a little larger job, okay? So what is the difference of this one? Well, there's more detail, okay? And here's how we break it up. When we first came out, there's an initial response, we charge 285. And then we charge equipment delivery, 589. Why? Because every time my truck rolls, we're, we're making that, okay? And then in this situation, we're gonna stabilize 
for whatever reason. I can't remember what it was. Maybe we were waiting on a dumpster. Maybe we were waiting on insurance approval. But for some reason, we were stabilizing for a couple of days. I can't remember at this point. Okay. We came out to stabilize 589. And this is the charge for the equipment during the stabilization. And then I have a summary line item that tells us what we did. Notice there's no dollar amount there. And that's basically where I'm stating we stabilized for two days. There's two drying chambers, four days total. And that's just explaining it, right? So this is a, de a description of what's going on on the job. And that's where you would normally put overhead, category one, class three, et cetera, all that jazz. I don't get into source of loss and all that stuff. There's many reasons why. Guys, the source of loss doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. Everybody says that it does, but it doesn't. Here's what matters. Something that is supposed to be dry is wet. That's the problem. Not what caused it, because you don't know. You have to start mitigating first. And when you write an estimate like this in the beginning, you're just writing what you see at the moment of documentation. Y'all get me fired up again. The source of loss, you're not an inspector. I don't worry about the source of loss. That's not my issue. Is it category three? If it's category three, I don't change my pricing for category three, okay? My price is my price. I change the way I mitigate because of category three, but that explains why and how you mitigated something that way. You don't necessarily have to change your pricing. Xactimate wants you to change your pricing for category three. Why? Because category three costs more than category two. So they give you the opportunity to put everything in category one, two, or three. Why? Because they will always argue category three to knock it down to category two. They will always argue category two to category one. Why do they do that? Because they save 30% every time they go from cat three to cat two to cat two to cat one. If you don't tell them it's cat three, the only reason why they care is cat three costs more money. That's why it's wet. That's it. Where is it wet? The water is the problem. They have coverage or they don't have coverage. And if they don't have coverage, who cares what the hell those guys think anyway? If they do have coverage, that's great. It's a water job. If you get that detailed information, you'll get it to them. Let me ask you a question. Do they want an estimate or do they want an invoice? What do they call your invoice? When you turn in your invoice at the end, what do they call it? An estimate. Mm. Can I tell y'all why? Because they don't owe for estimates. They owe for damages. And an estimate is not damages. An estimate is an estimate of damages. And they don't owe for estimates of damages. The minute that dude pays your bill, they become damages. It's no longer an estimate, it's paid damages. That's why they never call your invoice an estimate. They don't owe for estimates, they owe for damages. So what I do, we flip it on their head. We start giving them estimates and we squeeze them. It's claim control method, I'll teach you more later. If y'all wanna know more, go to workwithshane.com. If you really wanna know how we run the insurance, the way they play delay, deny, defend, we have our own game that we play with them. You can go to workwithshane.com, we can get on a call, but if you come on our program, you will sign an NDA. Cause I ain't getting no adjusters in my world. And if you're an adjuster, you'll sign the NDA too. You ain't dragging me into court. That's how we handle that stuff, right? We tell them what we're gonna do, how and why. Don't worry about source of loss and all this stuff, because you don't know. The more detail you put in there, the more you are screwing your client. The next thing that we do is we have a service call. We just put administration fee to relocate assets. This is because they don't like paying for emergency service call during business hours. So I don't call it that. I just call it something else. <laughs> and it works. Okay, this thing's paid in full, by the way. This is a template, I just took the customer information off. Prep and containment for chambers. These are like my category line items right here. And then these are just the descriptions of them. But prep and containment, this is not what the insurance company wants. I'll show you what they want in a minute, but this right here is detailed and makes sense. This is a story-based invoice, baby. This is all you need. Set up egress pathways, protect the floor before the work begins, 288 bucks. Set up and delivery of the remiss of the equipment, we're gonna come back and we're gonna charge them again for it, okay? Why? Because we're delivering more equipment and we're setting it up and we don't do stuff for free. Negative air fan, that's all good. PPE bundle, we do that by the bundle because they don't like paying for one or two or three items. So I said, all right, forget you guys. It's all in a bundle and ain't nothing you can do about it. And that's what we do. Um, there is our filter and then here's our equipment. So this right here says two units, four days. This is a muddy scope, okay? Notice I don't charge them per fan per day. That's what they want. I don't give them that. I tell them what it's going to be for the dehues, and you make them do the math. I make them do the math, and you know what? They ain't going to do the math. They're lazy. This is called a muddy scope. It's clean, it's clear, it's accurate, but you make them push buttons, and they don't like to push buttons because their humans are lazy too. I got lazy people in my life. They got lazy people in their life, right? So we're just stating what we're doing, antimicrobial, 
I built that by the hour, built it at 87. Why? Because I didn't think 86 was enough. Like, this is my company, dude. I set my own rates, okay? You don't have to do what everybody always does. Notice what you don't see. You don't see linear feet pulling baseboard because I don't choose to do stuff that way, and you don't have to. This was paid in full, bro. It was paid in full. But here's my point. I'm just showing you what the estimate looks like. Work performed at the source of loss. And again, if you guys want to know more, go to workchain.com and we can hop on a call and I can even get you guys templates of these things, okay? We've got a 30-day test drive. I show you how we do these, okay? I build them by work we do in chambers rather than by the linear foot. And this is 7,300 bucks for a clean cat one, okay? Trash removal, 489. Here's my monitoring. I got tired of them yelling at me about the monitoring trips by the hours. So I just charge them by the drip. It works every time. Yeah, they don't like to pay for decontamination, so just call it a restock fee and put it on there. They pay it, all right? So this is an example of what our estimate looks like. Like, this is a real-world example, okay? And here's where I'm gonna show you that it's a game. This is what we call the recap by category, okay? This is fully itemized, as you can see, and it's an Xactimate. It's what they want, right? But see, Xactimate is not what they want because they're not attacking the justification for what you did. Like if you send them this estimate, they're gonna be furious, I'm gonna tell you why. Because they wanna see how much you're charging for all these things, guys. They wanna see what you're charging for it, why? Because they wanna control that end dollar amount way down here by saying we don't pay for line item 45. Like they will go through here and they will pinch pennies on what they're gonna do, okay? They'll say, well, it wasn't after hours, okay? Or they'll say that it wasn't cat three, it was cat two or they'll say, you didn't have two people. They will say a lot of different things, guys. And like, here's my point. In this estimate, you come up to how many line items do you have to get to? 64 line items to land at what you want for $14,000. Like, why couldn't you do it? You could do it on three line items, but the insurance company tries to control the end by controlling the means. And here's what I'm telling you right now. Send the insurance company the recap by category where it doesn't have all of this information over here and they will go berserk. They will go bananas, okay? They don't just wanna see all of this stuff right here. They wanna see how much you're charging for everything here because they wanna know, are you changing the pricing on line item 52 or line item 54. The white paper is an Xactimate so you can run the pricing any way you want. But when you change it, they go bananas and they go berserk. And this is Xactimate. Xactimate, okay, is owned by Verisk, which is in, like literally in bed with the insurance company. They literally help and assist in underwriting policies. And yet these are the bozos in control of the estimating software that they want you to use. Hello, McFly, do you see the problem here? Okay, here's what I'm telling you. These guys are crooks, just straight up. They just straight up crooks. Is Xactimate the problem? No, it's just a tool. But here's what I'm telling you. The insurance companies are abusing it, okay? And this is what we call Xactimate recap by category. This won't work. And that's why I'm telling you Xactimate's not the solution either. They wanna see crystal clear detail so they can get that dollar amount as low as possible. Cause look, do you see how detailed this estimate is, dude? This thing's got 64 line items. Turn it in and they will still whittle it down. Turn it in and they will whittle it down. What my other one have? 30? I don't know. 20? That's very detailed. But the difference is they have back-end pricing on all these line items and they're going to tell you we don't pay for that. We don't pay for it during business hours. We don't pay that amount. They want you to charge them for 0.5 of an air filter. Insurance is a doggone game. Okay? And hopefully in this video, I've shown you what some of the differences look like. Here's all I want you to know. If you're writing a cash pay, you need to keep in mind of your $1,000 thresholds. Very simple. If you're writing an insurance job, okay, then the QuickBooks example I gave you was very simple, very clean, okay? And it's not a $2,000 a year subscription to use that stuff, okay? QuickBooks, you can get it for like 50 bucks a month, all right? And we can give you guys all the back-end pricing if you come into some of our programs, okay? Because I've built back-end pricing for all the stuff you've seen, and we'll actually load it into your QuickBooks account, right? And it's yours forever. You don't have to pay me for that, okay? But why do I do that? Because like, I've already done it and there's no need for you to go reinvent the wheel, okay? So hopefully that is helpful, guys. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below, okay? And tag me, all right? Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. And if you wanna know more, go to workwithshane.com, okay? Like, guys, getting the job is the hardest thing in restoration. Getting paid is the second hardest. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, I've got three things for you. Number one, if you haven't yet, click on my face below and be sure to subscribe to the channel, okay? We put out new content each and every week. Also, if you want me to help you grow your company, go to workwithshane.com. Workwithshane.com, put in your information, we can get on a call and see how we can help you grow your company. Lastly, there'll be some other videos right here. If you want to watch more content about growing your restoration company, check out one of these videos. We'll see you guys on the next one.